We're back at this uh, suck on distributor rotor. I didn't try this last time. I didn't try that as a pry tool. But um, this thing is gonna come off today. I know it. And uh, that's all that matters is prying it off again. 7:30 seconds. There's AC compressor leaking. I don't know if that switch. I gotta get a machine. Said that. A little warm out today. Give you that. There it is, right back there. Another trick I didn't do it last time because I was being sloppy and fast. Yeah, polish that. But um, put your wires, tuck them. You know, the whole passenger side, tuck them, and then the driver's side, tuck them, so you're not fucking with them down on that firewall like it happened last time. I haven't done this job in a couple years. I'll admit that. But yeah. If we give it a couple of whacks, maybe try to loosen it up. Tapping it in the wrong direction. I do know that. It's coming off. Uh, yeah, definitely. This is the tool to have. Little body clip tool. And then I put a screwdriver like that. And I rest it on. And you can just keep prying up on it. And it pops up. I already got it off. You see a little bit. I gotta give it one more yank. And I can get this fucker off. So now I'll tell you what we're doing. Because we made some progress. But yeah, cap and rotor. We're changing on this thing. I don't think I'm going to screw with the wires, but I could, in theory. But it's pretty easy to do wires on these trucks. But yeah, as you see, that thing was stuck on. I never had a rotor stuck on so bad in the history of this rig. And look at all the, uh, the rust on there. Why is it rusty? Moisture. The moisture here, yeah, rust it up. 100% humidity all the time. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to... I think what I'm going to do to keep the iron dust from getting inside that distributor, I'm going to have a, put a piece of aluminum foil over it, cut a hole around it, and then wire wheel that whole shaft. And then I'm going to put a little dielectric grease on it, so hopefully that will prevent it from rusting. Probably won't, but it'll last a couple of years. You like something like this. Always keep a piece of aluminum foil around anytime you're doing grinding or want to cover shit quick. That's all right. And uh, yeah, this gonna could actually just tape around it. That'd be easier. Yeah, fuck the little foil. Use tape, masking tape. What are we doing? Put that back on the wall chain. Help! Help me! Yeah, something like that. And then let's try to clean that all up with something too big for the job. If it even fits, I'm gonna have to probably get a Dremel. Yeah, it's gonna be all fucked up. Alright, I will say a piece of Scotch Bright works way better than um wire wheel. Cleans it up real fast. We did that, we put a little dielectric grease all the way around it. Just a light, 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 light layer. And uh on the cap you have a little indentation that just lines up with a little hole on the uh the shaft. And you missed it to install it. I just usually give it a little bop with my palm. Or you can use a little um, mallet. But look at this thing. Now I have play going this way. And I could pick up on it now. Before I couldn't pick up on it. I know something's not right with this thing though. I know it for a fact. I think it cracks in a star. I should really put a new shaft in it. But I ain't fucking with it today. I'd like to get that piece out of it. What the hell that thing is. Now, when you put your distributor cap on, as you see where I'm working, I'm actually inside the engine bay and there's plenty of room. It's easier this way in this truck. Uh, there's a little, that little back piece has to align with a little crevice in the module. And then just drop it down. Make sure like you're not pinching anything, the wires or nothing. And uh, then when it's on correctly, the cap is going to sit over the housing. I don't think it's quite there yet. Sometimes you gotta finagle it a little bit. What the deal is too, when you remove the module, so I replace this module many years ago, sometimes the module is not sitting correctly in that housing, because it'll move just a slight bit. I'll have to jiggle it around a little bit to get it to sit. It all depends how you get those two bolts that hold the module on. Yeah, just make sure it's flush all the way around. I don't want to install it crooked. Still catching on something. Hold on. There we go, right there. It's on. 
All right, we got a cap on, then we got to tighten those two screws. They are again 730 seconds. See them on the old cap. What you do though, and I always do, they're very small, you can strip out the housing that it threads into. Turn the screws backwards until you feel them catch. Just don't go monkey them on. So again, turn them backwards, get your little tool as so. I usually use a nut driver with a socket, see it fits on pretty good. Turn it backwards, you're gonna hear it drop down and click, then go forward and tighten. And both ones, see, so you want to strip it. And what I also do, I always mark number one on the cap. This was something crayon, something that's going to be on this particular model truck. It's going to be the first stud to the left of that post on this side. I'm looking at the cap that way. The module's over there, so that's number one. I always mark it just so I know. So I'll mark that on a new one. It's going to be number one right here. Once you tighten those two screws, you don't have to go crazy tight. You know, this nice and snug, and then when it's snug, just give it a little bit. You could use a ratchet too, but just don't don't monkey them on. You'll strip those threads. Just want it nice and snug, you know, so it's not rocking around. And go a little bit more, then you're okay. Now you got to put your wires on. And this is going to be one. What's that? Eight four or eight five seven something? I forget the firing order. I got it written down. So let me go consult that, and uh, we'll put the wires back on. We're not going to change the wires today. It's getting too hot out. So another day. At least that's half is done. <laughs> no, I don't live there anymore. Maybe some of my YouTube viewers recognize that if they're watching. But um, this is the firing order on the other uh, truck. One, two, uh, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Or one. I forget the friggin' firing order. Is that right? One, eight, four. One, eight, four, three, six. Yeah, sometimes. No, two, seven, yeah, I don't know, that's how it was before, I guess, but what I do, I always get these little labeled things for the wires, you could just mark it beforehand, if you didn't mark it and just rip them all off, you can figure it out anyway, you just gotta trace the wires, it's kind of a pain in the ass, you, you know, you pull on them a little bit, take them out of the clips, you'll figure out which cylinder goes to what, but I, I mark all mine, these are little MSD things you can get for like eight bucks or so, sometimes when you buy wires, they come in them for free. And you pop those on the wire so you know, and put it on in order. Okay, roll on. Try to make the wires, you know, nice. You can tuck them in between one of another. See, like there and there and there and there. Just give them a little space between each one. God forbid they ever start jumping. If the wires go bad. Uh, yeah, this one obviously doesn't have a coil on it. Small cap distributor. It's not like an HEI, which is kind of cool. But uh, now we're done. We can plug in anything else you disconnected, like this uh, crack pipe. And uh, I'm gonna try to put back on this wiring loom that fell off. I actually added this loom that wasn't on factory. I'm gonna try to pop that thing back on and crank it up. Lastly, or finally, on um, sometimes when you screw with the wires, these little clips they pop off and everything in the back. So make sure they're all on, you know, and the wires aren't touching the manifold or whatnot. You're not going to burn up any of your wires. Usually the wires stay put, you know, as long as you're not uh, screwing with them. Take all this crap off and uh, should run. I don't know what it is today, but it just got like really, really hot. Smooth, man. Way smoother. It was jumping last time I cranked it. That's oh, good. Real good. Wow. That is smooth. See what happens with these caps. The humidity, they just, all that moisture in there just starts eating up those posts. And you're not getting a good uh, contact when, this, when the rotor comes around when it's charging the coil. Damn, that thing runs freaking like new. Damn, no shake. Mint. I'm very happy. That's how you do it. You save yourself a shitload of money. And if uh, you like this video and you're watching, uh, please subscribe. We got a bunch of old Chevy trucks here. We do a lot of work on them and uh, shitty old creases and wagons. Yeah, as long as it's not hot out, we do it all.